morning. I'm uh, Lupa from the Cadillac Farms. This is Jason, also from the Cadillac Farms. We're installing a 8.8 inch differential into a CCSV from Creative Steel. Uh, this is the stock differential unit. Uh, we've already taken off the rear of the um, of the headers. Now we're taking off the drive shaft. You'll have two bolts to undo here. 15 millimeters. You'll have a whole bunch of 8 millimeters of um, excess here. Bolts over there on the, uh, the rear of the transmission, so we're going to do that and we'll get back. All right, uh, so you can see now we've removed the drive shaft, which is there, the exhaust is here, and um, I've also changed the transmission mount uh, with the Creative Steel transmission mount, which is great. And that was really easy because once you have the exhaust off, it's just a few bolts, you take off the the, uh, the, the brake there and change it right away. Um, so right now what we're doing, here's our dip and here's our axles. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the wheels off, get the caliper and the uh, rotor off and everything like that. And we're going to get the axles out. We're going to drop the dip, which is just a couple of bolts over the dip to the body. And, uh, The caliper is held on by two 18 millimeter bolts here, and there's one Torx uh, screw here holding the caliper onto the hub. So we'll do that, secure the caliper out of the way, and then after we'll also put it back. Alright, now we've got to do the inspection of the brake. How we do that is we move this bolt here, this bolt here, this bolt here, this bolt here, tie rod, and we got to also just the bolt. With the ball joint, I just went up on the other side. I went up with a half-inch drive extension and this uh, air wrench. Went at it with an air wrench, except for this one. It's got you know, two people going at that at the same time. Or, you know, just an opposite. Uh, so we're going to do that. And just so you don't get your bolts mixed up, this is the one that comes up here. is the one with the other bolt on the other side, and this one is the shorter one, I do believe. Um, what we're doing now is, uh, this is the old axle which came out, I mean, very easily. Once we got the, uh, this is definitely freed off and everything, we yanked it. It just came out. Um, so that was not a big deal at all. So, the story on this axle is, uh, all this is going away, however, with the kit, we do get new axles. I'll show you here. This is a new axle, much heftier, much better. We don't have it. But we don't have out the V on this axle. So we need to we need to reuse this. Um it comes with an adapter so we can use the old outboard so right now. Alright, so now the uh, outer Outboard CV has come out, uh, you just hit it with a hammer and it will come off. And what we're doing now is we need to take out the original one of these to put in this new adapter for the uh, axle. So what we, we've done is you take this outer race and you push it in and now you take all the bearings out of it. And uh, just like that, put them off to the side. They're like, they're big really thick, they're like the size of marbles. And uh, once you do that, this should be able to come right out. It's a little bit more than I got to. It's a really greasy job. But see, he's gotten it out. We're just gonna replace the uh that inner bit with this new one, put them back together, and put them onto the new axles. So we'll get back to them. All right, so this is a little adapter that goes into your outer CV. Your old one will look just like this. You take it out and sort of just roll it until it's uh, aligned right up. My hands are a little bit greasy right now, so there we go. And it'll come out, and then you just swap it. Those are the old ones right there. This has got a different spline count, so you can take the heft of your axle, put it in the same way, just roll it in, get it to line up, and then just mess with it. And then um, this goes in. Like I said, you just mess with it. 
But um, this outer ball here goes in. You just have to line up these holes in the outside. This. It'll go in. Then you have to put in the bearings the reverse way that you took them out. So you're going to do this one then on the other side, and the other side, the other side, and then roll it back around and um, put your bearings back in. But you just sort of force your bearings back into the holes and make sure they line up. Right, so now the um, differential is completely uh, by itself now. The axles are disconnected, drive shafts disconnected. All it is holding on the differential is these three bolts. One here, one here, and one here. So you're going to want to have somebody hold up the differential while you take off the last bolts and uh, then just drop it down and uh, see if we can get some. And you can see now the um, disc has been completely removed. These are the mounts that are sat in here, here, and here. Um, you're going to want to get two or three people for this job because once you get these two bolts out first, the rear ones, um, it's going to be held in completely by this front one here. And that you can hammer through the front side of the diff. And when that comes down, the diff's just going to free fall. So make sure you got someone under there to hold it. Uh, we got it out. The diff's right here. This is the Get Rag diff, of course. And this is the 8.8 .8 with the custom powder coated and everything by Creative Steel. Um, as you can see, that, I mean, there's no comparison. I mean, look. Like, it compared, I mean, it's just. This will solve all the problems, I guarantee. Um, make sure at this point you not fill your diff up. Because they, as you can see, the old diff is full of oil. As it tilts during the installation, it's going to spill oil out. So you fill your diff after it's installed. Um, Creative Steel includes two quarts of your uh, two ice, two quarts of your, um, your oil of choice. And you, uh, you fill it up right there. You don't want any synthetic or anything like that. It was recommended by Max and Creative Steel to just go with pure dinosaur blood oil. So we got Valvoline because I'm Valvoline fan. So there's that. And we're going to lift her up now. We're going to lower the car a little bit. This is actually going to be advantageous to people doing this in their front yard because you can get it on there with like a, you know, just a moving pallet and just jack it right up. We're going to lower the car on the lift a little bit so we can get it up. All right, so uh, with our little problem, we didn't want us to lift up the differential on the car, so we lowered the car a bit. We also worked out a little jig. You can see here, differential, half of an office chair, and the crate that came in. Um, this is going to work great. We lowered the car right up to about this point, and then we're going to just lift it up with this chair and uh, put it right into place, put the bolts in, and uh, tighten her up. Uh, then we're going to take a lunch break, get some Loctite, and uh, put the twig on. So it's... Uh, that's what we're doing now. As you can see here, we can just lift up and get it going almost right into place. So that should be quite good. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, we just got the differential in. Um, we used the supplied bolts on the supplied nuts on the stock bolts. Um, for here, it actually didn't include a bolt that was short enough to clear here. So what we did, we just we just put a bunch of half-inch washers there, and uh, we torqued it up to 70 foot-pounds, and it's it's fine. I mean, the, that sucker's in there good. So now we're gonna put the twig up in. Uh, we got a drive shaft adapter to go to our stock to go to the transmission, uh, and then we got our new twig right down there from the drive shaft shop. Nice lightened alloy twig. It's gonna be real nice. We're gonna put it in now. All right, so here's the transmission. We've just affixed the uh, drive shaft adapter from the drive shaft shop. It's really easy. Um, you'll see there's three bolts in a package with a uh, lock washer and a, a bolt and a nut. And uh, it just comes right in there, and this is where your, your twig will mount up here. So you just put this on. We're going to torque these to about 50 foot-pounds. And uh, as you can see, it's being done now. And another ring is. All right, we're installing the drive shaft right now. So we had a little bit of a problem with this rubber here that goes onto a, a bearing in the drive shaft. Um, we think, that, see, there's a little bit of a fitment issue, but since it's rubber mounted, we think we can just get it in the right place. All right, as you can see now, the shaft has been installed. 
Um, we're no longer using a lift from this point. From this point, we'll be doing it just with a couple jack stands, exactly as if you would see this kid at home. Uh, once the shaft's in, you want to get your drive shaft aligned in right, and there's these two set screws on the bottom. You take them out, put your Loctite on them, and then you put them in and tighten them up. And uh, you know, just bolt it up to the diff, supplied bolts. Pulls it up to the transmission with the included adapter and, and the supplied bolt, and you're good. And there's your um, your new uh, drive shaft support with bearing and all that. Um, and there it is. So now what we're doing is we've got the axles. Uh, we've put the race adapters in the, in our stock outer seats. And we're going to be putting those in right now. All right, so for this part, we got to tighten these bolts here to 57 foot-pounds as per the instructions on the axle. So um, we were originally trying to not to clamp on on the, uh, on the splines, but we ended up just clamping on to the very rear of the splines just so that it wouldn't spin around when we are trying to apply that much torque. It says 57. That really feels like quite a lot. And um, one of these washers actually popped out trying to get it to 57, so we're doing it down at 52. And we uh, think that'll be fine. And this is the other axle. Um, on the one before this, we we did the torque at a good solid 55. That seems to be a good point. Um, and we're, we're not having any trouble getting it to 55. Nice, good torque figure. Um, we've already greased the inside of the CV. Um, just included is two tubes of CV to paste. It's pretty self-explanatory. Just want to get that sucker full of grease, you know, get all those bearings greased up real good. And then, um, you know, after this we're going to be putting the clamps on, and uh, we'll show you that in a minute. Alright, now what we're doing here is putting this clamp, the included clamp, on the, um, on the outboard CV. It's the only one that needs to be clamped because well, that's the one you put on. Um, what you do is you take your special tool from Advanced Auto Parts and use that in a minute. And you see here, you got your two your two notches and then all the um, holes in here. You get it as good as you can just with your hands, as tight as possible, as my buddy here John is demonstrating. Okay, and then you see it's nice, it's in the, it's in the holes and everything. You make sure it's all lined up in the groove. And then you take your special tool, open it up all the way, you'll see those jaws open. And then cramp it up. Not lining up. Yep, there you go. See, and that is now attached very well. It's a little bit off the lines, but doesn't make a difference. It's attached very well. It's not going anywhere. Okay. And now your CV boot is over its sock. Alright, now we've got our axle all ready to go. CV's on, bolts torque. There's the diff. All we do, we slide that sucker right in there. Longer axle goes on the passenger side, shorter one driver side. There are two different length axles. We get it in. Is it lined up? All the way in. All the way in. Grabbing. Grabbing. All right. Do you have to hammer it in more to get it to lock? I don't think so. No. Try pulling on it. Nope. Oh, wow. That was easy. Wow. It just goes right in, and it's good. So there you go. And we're gonna do the other side. Same thing. All right. So now we're um, taking our two quarts of uh, gear oil, taking it in this upper hole here, that's your fill hole, just get it in there, square it in. It's that simple. Wait. Wait. Yeah, just wait for me to get to the next bottle. You can edit this. <laughs> Are you finished? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Now we've got our, our, our rear hub assembly on again. Well, what you want to do is you want to lay out your bolts and your nuts. There's only two nuts. First nut goes on here under the ball joint. You want to do that uh, 
I'll do that second. First thing you do is you put on your your um, tie rod and get it in this hole. You don't have to bolt it on first. Then screw in your uh, your ball joint with the, uh, the the nut, the factory nut. And then after that, you get down here with your um, with your suspension spring and everything like that. Get that through. And then this here lower control arm. Get a um, 21 millimeter wrench on one side and your gun on the other side. Get that on. Then get the bolt through here on your tie rod. And finally your shock. Right there. So, and that's all there is to it. But one thing I really want to stress is get your get your um, axle all the way through through the hub here. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of problems. Just make sure it's all the way through and um, torque everything up, and uh, you're ready to put your calipers and everything else on. And this is important here. Get your little torque bit back in here. It breaks completely on flat. Screw that in. Make your little. Little driver. Drive that guy in. Right there. He doesn't need that much torque, just give him give him a little bit of ball. He's good. Now we put the Brembo's back on. Separate your pads and I mean first grade stuff. Take your two bolts. Lower one. The shorter one is the lower. The taller one is the upper. I do believe in the double check. Yep, what I just said was not a lie. The taller one goes up top, the shorter one goes down the bottom. Throw a little bit of Loctite on these guys. Anything you see Loctite on originally, throw some more on. And then uh and then you put your wheels on. That's simple. Alright, now can't forget to put your uh, your axle nut on. Put some wash tight on there, get it on. And this we're gonna torque with the impact driver. What size is that? This is most likely the wrong size. I think it's a, it's a 20 something millimeter. We used a uh, 1 and 5 sixteenths. That's all we had available around the shop and works fine. So just a quick test. Put it in gear and they're spinning. The pipes are still off which is why it sounds like an ass car but yep, pretty good. Alright, we are done. As you can see, I, I hooked my cat back back up, and it has no clearance issues whatsoever. I mean, it clears it perfectly fine. Um, I do have a custom cat back though, uh, so. But I mean, I'm sure with the stock pipes or even just a mild aftermarket exhaust, you'll be fine. Uh, we got the wheels back on, of course, and you can see here. Turn the wheel this way. The differential's working. So, we're gonna put her back down and put back the exhaust. Be very careful with your studs. I had to replace two studs on this one. Just hook it back up nice and careful. Put your car down, give her a run.